All right, everybody. So it's 6.05 on my watch, so I think we'll get started. And anybody else who uh, is, is going to join us can just join in as they as they come along. So good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for uh, being with us tonight. I don't know where you are in Ontario, but uh, definitely a nice snowy cold night. So what an excellent uh, night to be on a webinar with the college. Uh, my name is Ryan Pistan, and I'm the communications manager here at the college. And I'm joined by my colleague, Laura Thacker, the director of quality assurance. And tonight we have a presentation for you that's going to run through the draft council uh, and committee competency profile. And we're going to explain the rationale for why this document was created and kind of just give you the, the larger rundown for, uh, for this new governance process. Uh, so we do have a quick presentation for you, and then there is some discussion questions uh, toward the end of the presentation. Uh, as you're going along, do feel free to type in those questions in the chat box. I will be moderate, uh, moderating that um, as we go along, but we probably will be answering all your questions toward the end. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Laura, to get us started. Laura? I think you may be muted, Laura. Just bear with us one moment while we try to figure this out. Okay, here we are. Thank you very much, Ryan, for that. Um, so thank you everyone for, for joining us this evening. Uh, you probably are wondering why a competency profile for elected and appointed council and committee members? Well, health uh, profession regulators like the College of Kinesiologists of Ontario exist to protect the public interest and there has been a great deal of attention on uh, modernization of regulation in the past several years in terms of improvement of decision making capacity. Canada is one of the last bastions of self-regulation all over the world. Uh, we're seeing major governance reform. And one idea has been to establish uh, an independent oversight body, such as the UK's Professional Standards Authority. But right now in Ontario, many regular, uh, regulatory bodies are beginning to introduce changes to the way they govern themselves to help better serve the interests of the public. So the Ontario Ministry of Health has recently released uh, a document called the College Performance Measurement Framework, and health regulatory colleges are required to report and publish information about their governance organization and, and actions. The idea here is to strengthen accountability and oversight and improve college performance. The first measurement domain is uh, titled Governance, and it concerns the efforts undertaken to ensure that council and statutory committees have the requisite knowledge and skills to warrant good governance and decision making. So the first standard under this domain includes a measure that where, poss where possible, council and statutory committee members have the knowledge, skills and commitment needed to effectively perform their role prior to taking their position. The ministry is looking specifically for evidence that kinesiologists are eligible to stand for election to council only after meeting predefined competency suitability criteria and attending an orientation training about the college's mandate and expectations pertaining to the role and responsibilities. And they're looking for similar evidence for statutory committee candidates. So this standard includes uh, another measure that council and statutory committees regularly assess or evaluate their effectiveness and address identified opportunities for improvement through ongoing education. So the college has been monitoring these developments and is discussing now how it can enhance its own processes. Uh, if you've taken a look at our most recent strategic plan, you'll see that uh, the college is committed to improving the way it operates. And the first uh, goal uh, largely centers around this. It involves developing a competency profile of qualifications to use in the selection of council and committees, developing training mechanisms for council and committees, and increasing openness around processes to select council and committee members. The ultimate goal being that council and committees make the best possible decisions to improve patient client safety and reduce risk of harm. 
so this is um, this is step one. Um, there is much more uh, to come, uh, but it's just sort of the the first. Um, the first step in the larger uh, process of governance reform and decisions that need to be made by council and a move towards competency-based assessment and education of council and committee members. Implementation of clearly defined competencies for council and committee members is a key component to ensuring effective governance. If we think of governance in terms of who has the authority to make decisions, how decisions are made, and how an organization is accountable to its stakeholders, then governance really helps an organization to achieve its mandate, which for a regulator uh, such as uh, CKO is about um, governing the profession of kinesiology and the public interest. Regulators across Canada have identified universal principles for good governance applicable to health regulatory bodies. And these include elements such as council composition, including a variety of skills and competencies and practices, appointments being competency-based, uh, the model applying to both council and committee members, a list of competencies for individuals and for council as a whole, and an initial screening for self-reflection. And another element uh, common uh, uh, under these uh, uh, good uh, principles or principles of good governance rather is uh, the idea of entry level uh, competency training for all council and board members as well as chair training and training for adjudicative com committees. So the, the profile uh, really defines the knowledge, skill, judgment, attitude and experience requirements for effective performance in the position of a council or committee member. Uh, the college conducted a literature review and an environmental scan of other regulators' competency profiles. And this draft profile was largely adapted from the Health Profession Regulators of Ontario, so that's HPRO, their board council competencies document. Um, so the council and uh, committee competency profile uh, will serve um, multiple functions. Uh, it will be used to communicate to registrants, uh, the government, the public, and employers the requirements to be a member of council or committees. Um, it will help determine the suitability and eligibility of individuals who wish to become council or committee members, and it will enable the evaluation of council and committee performance. It will also help um, with the development and orientation of um, of resources uh, to address any gaps that have been identified, as well as for marketing and recruitment strategies to address vacancies, as well as succession planning. So the profile indicates the level to which uh, an individual member should possess the competency, uh, whether it's present as a person assumes the role or whether it can be uh, developed uh, further on in the role. And these competencies would apply to most committees and committee members as well. At a later date, uh, college will likely define additional committee specific competencies um, that could be further developed once a member is appointed to the committee, um, as well as uh, further um, training and development opportunities uh, later on and throughout the year. Uh, so the profile will help um, in the election and selection of council and committee members. That's uh, primarily where it will be used. Uh, the college um, is run by a council, similar to a board of directors. Council sets the college's strategic direction, and it makes decisions that protect and promote the public interest. The college's council or board of directors is made up of 10 kinesiologists elected by their fellow kinesiologists and six to eight people appointed by the Ontario government to provide the public's perspective. The college's committees are made up of council members and kinesiologists who apply every year to sit on uh, committees. Um, and these are, are non-council committee members or members at large. And I, sh I do just want to emphasize here that it's, it's not necessary for, for council and committee members to be proficient in all competencies. What is important is that council has the collective expertise in the competencies that are necessary to provide the oversight and strategic guidance to college staff. 
So at this point, um, you know, rather than reviewing um, all 12 units in depth, um, what we'd like to do is discuss highlights with you, um, uh, competencies um, that are unique perhaps to health profession regulation. Uh, so if you have the uh, draft profile handy as we, we go along, that might be helpful. And we'll start with individual competencies. So the profile distinguishes between competencies for individual council and committee members and those for council and committees as a whole. Competencies for individuals would be um, you know, the knowledge, skills, and judgment that individuals would be expected to bring or acquire through um, initial orientation and training prior to beginning their roles. And they're organized into nine units as follows. Understanding governance, responsibilities, and fiduciary duties, uh, financial and organizational oversight, leadership, uh, professionalism and good character, emotional intelligence, communicator and communication skills, thinks broadly thought processes, inclusiveness, respectful of diversity, understanding of public sector and health systems. So for unit one, um, understanding governance uh, responsibilities and fiduciary duties, this means understanding the role fiduciary duties and stewardship responsibilities of a council member, including effective governance principles. Council members have a commitment to the public and their right to safe ethical care demonstrated by an understanding and appreciation of a commitment to public protection mandate and the time required to execute the role effectively. This means understanding of the roles of the council and committees and the role of individual council and committee members it means understanding that the council provides strategic direction and provides oversight, a critical role, and it monitors effective performance of achieving the strategic goals of the organization. It means understanding their legal and fiduciary duties, including loyalty, good faith, trust, preparedness, participation. Council and committee members must act honestly in the interest of the public. They're there to serve the public, not their own interests. It means understanding the concept of accountability, both individually and organizationally, and ensuring decisions are in the public interest and that appropriate information is available to the public. And it means understanding the meaning of conflict of interest and the importance of and process for declaring con conflicts. So moving on to uh, the second unit, financial and organizational oversight, council and committee members are expected to understand the concept of risk management and commit to identification and mitigation of organizational risk. Um, they're expected to understand processes for managing people, understand finance and accounting, reporting concepts uh, in terminology, how to interpret financial statements, the role of council, management, and the auditor in financial reporting. They should be able to read, interpret, and question financial statements to make informed decisions and understand financial planning process. Council members need to ensure that the college is governed within its budget allocation based on the principle of value for money and that there are appropriate controls in place. So providing this kind of oversight is a key role of council. Moving now into Unit 9, so this is understanding of uh, public sector and health systems, um, having an awareness of the complex system at which the college works, including stakeholders in the system and the impact that the college's decisions have on the public. Uh, having a commitment to serve the public and the people of Ontario, knowledge of the concept of public interest and the ability to place the interests of the public ahead of the interests of individuals and organizations and communicate this to others. Having knowledge of the health regulatory system, its purpose and how it functions, has knowledge of the legal framework and procedures relevant to health regulatory processes, understanding the accountability relationship to the Ministry of Health, analyzing the potential impact of decisions on the public, and the ability to think strategically about systemic issues and the role of the organization in the broader regulatory and profession-specific sectors. 
So now we'll turn to competencies for overall um, council and committees. Uh, so while individual council and or committee members will have competencies to varying degrees, overall it is important that the council and committees themselves have a collective set of competencies through one or more council and committee members that enable to govern effectively. These include diversity, experience, and knowledge. So for diversity, the aim here is to have a council or committees that represent broad perspectives and experiences so the deliberations are informed and decisions include and respect diverse perspectives. This means representation from various cultures, individuals with differing gender identities, diversity of educational training, regional diversity, individuals with various physical abilities, attributes, challenges, and a diverse set of background, including work experience. So indicators um, for this would include the adoption of recruitment strategy to ensure diverse representation, evaluating board council performance using measures that assess inclusivity, recognition of organizational risks that lack of diversity can present, and a formalized process to uh, respond to inappropriate or non-inclusive behavior. So for experience, um, I guess we're looking here for uh, governance work, either at a board, committee, or community level, having experience as part of a leadership team of an organization uh, or in a position for an organization or a board. And for knowledge, um, specifically clinical knowledge, knowledge of legislation and regulations governing the profession, an in-depth knowledge of the practice standards for the profession, a knowledge of the regulated profession being governed, in our case, kinesiology, having an understanding of organizational justice and understanding the importance of workplace behavior, having an understanding of the importance of and process for strategic planning, the setting of long-term strategic goals for an organization. So we have received a few questions about the profile to date. Uh, one, uh, one registrant asked, uh, you know, these leadership competencies seem to ask a lot of junior members or members without extensive leadership experience. Is the intent of council to exclude certain members from sitting on council? And while I can't comment on what the outcome of the on, uh, consultation will result in, or the assessment or screening process will look like as determined by council, the idea here behind um, the overall uh, council competencies is to ensure that collective competence and breadth of perspective to govern the organization effectively. So it's not necessary for all council and committee members to be proficient in all competencies. Again, what's important is that as a whole, they have the expertise and knowledge and skills necessary to provide that necessary oversight. Uh, an individual that doesn't have extensive board experience may not be automatically excluded. They may bring to the table other skills and perspectives. Having said that, uh, this isn't just any old board and there are uh, key skill sets that are required from the outset in order to ensure that the college effectively fulfills its public protection mandate and meets the ministry's requirement. Uh, so the intent is not to ex exclude individuals who may bring a different perspective and provide diversity in decision making. Uh, the goal is to improve equity and avoid a council that looks the same and sounds the same. Uh, so that's just sort of a brief overview of, uh, of the highlights. And uh, at this point, I think we'd like to open up the webinar uh, for some discussion. We've prepared some questions for you. Um, and if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to ask. You can type your questions into the, the chat box. Um, so while you're, you're thinking and typing away, um, I'll, I'll start by reading. Uh, are the competencies in these units clear? Is there anything missing? Uh, are they important or relevant? Uh, do you feel to board or council or committee governance? If not, how do you feel that they should be amended? Do they promote openness and transparency and, transparency and equity in the selection process? Thanks, Laura. So just a friendly reminder, uh, please type in those questions into the question box. 
Um, I'll give everybody a few minutes just to gather uh, all of their questions. So definitely uh, don't be shy. Type in those questions. Um, anything that we cannot answer tonight, uh, I should let you know that we will definitely take that back. Um, so, and we'll talk more about final steps, but once the consultation ends on February 16th, uh, shortly after we'll be publishing a consultation report that includes all of the cues that we received, our questions we received, and all and the answers that we provided. So if there's something that we cannot answer tonight, uh, we will for sure get back with an answer. So uh, definitely type those questions in if you have any. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, maybe we can uh, go to the, the next slide, Ryan, and we can uh, we can read those uh, questions and see if they sure. generate any any discussion. Okay, so is there anything that has been left out that uh, you'd like to see added or, or clarified? And and we'd like to know what you think about the structure of the document. Is it clear? Um, are there ways um, it could be uh, presented that are more accessible? And then finally, has the webinar been helpful in clarifying the intended purpose of the profile? What, you know, we realize that this is uh, just sort of um, the, the first step in the process, and you probably have lots of, of questions and wonderings about, um, you know, uh, where we're headed, and, and we'll certainly talk about that um, after addressing any of your questions. Uh, so, Laura, I am seeing a few coming in. Okay. So, the first one we have, <clears throat> excuse me, in my region for council, there were initially no kinesiologists running for the council seat. Would placing more limits on the council seats, in addition to the election, make it too difficult to find those willing to run for council? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, I think uh, I think with this um, uh, 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 reform or, or initiative hopes to do um, is address um, some of those types of issues, um, you know, by um, strengthening sort of transparency around um, what the mandate uh, of the council uh, and the college is um, and what is, you know, sort of expected um, in terms of roles and responsibilities uh, for, uh, for these types of positions. And I think the the hope is that um, you know this uh, profile will become the foundation um, for you know sort of improved uh, marketing and recruitment strategies uh, by the college to ensure that um, you know that we're able to fill the gaps and um, and make sure that there that there are um, uh, qualified uh, kinesiologists um, putting their names uh, forward, um, uh, showing interest to, to run for these positions, and um, and uh, I, I don't think the intent is is to create barriers, uh, but you know I think this will be helpful in. Um, in informing our, our marketing and recruitment moving forward. Yeah, that, that was a good answer, Laura. And I think one thing I would just add to this, uh, to that point is, generally speaking, we've been very fortunate that we have um, a pretty engaged uh, membership that does want to step up for council. Uh, so by and large, I would say we are very fortunate where we don't have a huge uh, recruitment issue for council. Uh, there are other colleges that do have to do multiple calls sometimes, but we've been we've generally been very fortunate over the last uh, over the last four years. Um, so there is another question here, and this one we, we may have to take this one uh, back, but I will I will try I will try this one on you, Laura. Uh, okay. Did the board discuss what type of board it is or wants to be prior to the drafting of this document? For example, governance versus a collaborative model uh, toward decision making. Um, I, I think you know the, this. Um, 
um, this type of reform has been um, uh, discussed uh, at previous um, council meetings. Um, I'm aware that the, uh, the college um, uh, looked carefully at the, um, I believe it was the College of Nurses um, Vision 2020 and um, uh, some of the models that uh, other colleges um, have been uh, using. Um, so, you know, the, the council took a look at, um, at this uh, profile at, at its last meeting and um, and sort of uh, approved the um, the circulation and wanted to get uh, get feedback um, from stakeholders on um, on this proposed set of uh, competencies uh, because they were ones that um, have generally been sort of adopted by um, other colleges and and were developed by the um, governance working uh, group out of uh, HPro. Okay. Thanks, Laura. And then there was just one comment here that there may be a conflict between one of our statements. Uh, so we will we'll take that comment back offline, and we will we will look into that just to make sure that um, all of the information is indeed uh, is indeed flowing. Um, so I'm not seeing any other questions at this stage. I, we can give it another few minutes if there's anything that uh, that comes up. Maybe while we're waiting, we'll just flip to or uh, to the in terms of the next step slides, Laura. Sure. Um, so council uh, will be um, taking a look at um, you know different models um, of eligibility uh, criteria uh, being used by other uh, regulators. And um, this will involve uh, proposed amendments uh, to the bylaws. So uh, stay tuned because we will be um, circulating those for external consultation. Uh, they'll also be considering um, various models uh, for screening uh, committees. Um, this would be sort of the body that um, assesses the eligibility of uh, individuals interested in running for election to council or being appointed uh, to committees. Um, so that, uh, that will happen in the near future. And the final piece um, with this pro uh, project uh, will entail uh, developing an evaluation uh, framework. Uh, that is a requirement um, uh, by the ministry uh, and that's articulated in the CPMF uh, document. Um, so those are just that's sort of a high level overview of, of where we're headed on our uh, governance uh, reform uh, journey. But um, we're very um, interested in, in hearing your feedback. Um, uh, if you haven't already completed uh, the online uh, feedback uh, survey, we would encourage you to do so. And Ryan, maybe I'll, I'll pass it back over to you and, and you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So uh, as I mentioned at the off the top of the presentation, so um, the consultation period, i.e. the time where you can provide feedback, uh, we're accepting that until Tuesday, February 16th. Uh, and there's a couple of ways that you can get in touch with us with any thoughts you may have on this. Uh, so first thing is you definitely can send an email uh, with your with your comments to our general info in, uh, to our general info box, excuse me, which is listed uh, on this slide. And then we also do have a short uh, online survey done through SurveyMonkey that just asks you a few uh, targeted questions. Um, so definitely feel free to uh, get in touch with us and share your thoughts on this document uh, via one of those two channels. And uh, once this webinar is done, we will be posting the recording and the slide deck on our website. Um, so yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions at uh, this stage. So I think we will um, wrap it up for now. Again, uh, on behalf of Laura and myself, we really want to thank you all for taking time out of uh, your busy schedules to be with us tonight. We definitely appreciated the questions that um, came in and we look forward to hopefully uh, hearing from you on the survey or via email. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, and have a wonderful evening. Take care.